and we're over here at the Factory Entertainment booth. We're going to check out a lot of their prop replicas and other fan favorites. Some of these are going to be first-time debuts at a show. And we'll be seeing these for the first time after we've seen announcements previously. And we even see some new reveals. So check it out with us. And no better place to start than with the full-size prop replicas. We're showing out this Mumra helmet here, which is a show special that they're offering, a limited edition version. You can see that great cloth suspended by the wire there to give that look of uh, being windswept. Uh, next to that, we got the Count Rogan dagger from Princess Bride. And below these, I'll pan out a little bit so you can see the mixture of the Princess Bride and Masters of the Universe sword replicas. Amazing detail. You get that very metallic sheen to them. Uh, these to carry a little bit of weight, too. And then we have a LARP version of the Power Sword as well. Also on the bottom, we got a mixture of prop replicas from uh, Universal Monsters. We got that uh, Wolfman uh, cane from the Wolfman. We have Peacemaker's Tomahawk. And we have Hawkman's Mace. Above that, we got the Batarang. And I believe this is, um, I'm not quite sure, I believe this is uh, from the Batman, the newer one. Uh, as well as the, the grapple launcher here. And next to that, we have the Black Manta Knife that was recently revealed. Above that, we have our Star Trek line, including the Cricket Taser. This new uh, con necklace that was very recently revealed, so it's the first time we're seeing this in display. We have the Cricket Phaser uh, variant over here as well. And the Dustbuster Phaser over here. Above that, we get another Universal Monsters. So we got the Mummy Scabbering. We have the Sansa Star Crown from Game of Thrones. Another show special here, we have the Diamond Ray of Disappearance from Masters of the Universe. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. And next to that, we have an Ultraman Beta Capsule. Lastly, in this case, we have the Man at Arms Mace, uh, which looks pretty awesome. <laughs> if there was a, a real version of this, I guess this is what this would look like based on the cartoon appearance. Checking out more full-size uh, replicas, we got the Skeletor Havoc Staff. Uh, this thing is awesome. <laughs> it's as beautiful as it is massive, and that's going to be full-size. Everything here is one-to-one. -one. Uh, here's the Men in Black 2 Neuralizers that were revealed just a couple months ago, so we're seeing these on display for the first time. As is this Acrylian Galaxy Neck, which I believe just a couple weeks ago we, revealed, uh, we shared that reveal. <laughs> Next to that, we got a a Dune Cry Sky Knife. And the Colonial Warrior Blaster from Battlestar Galactica. We have some more full size weapons, including that awesome Sword of Omens there. Look at that handle. It's great. That hilt is amazing. Then we have a mixture of DC things, including Deathstroke Sword, the Sword of Athena from Wonder Woman, and then the God Killer Sword from the Wonder Woman movie. In the next case, we got the Wonder Woman tiara, the uh, iconic noisy cricket from Men in Black, the Viserys crown from House of the Dragon, also from House of the Dragon. We have the Blackfire sword and the Dark Sister sword. And below that, we have the seven foot trident here from Aquaman. And this comes in two pieces, obviously, because it's the length of the case, and then some. And from the world of Star Trek, we got an assault phaser. This is a recent reveal, as is the Strange New World phaser. Below that, we got the Next Generation Cobra phaser. And the Medical Tricoder. I believe there's electronics on this one, but this one's just not lit up. Below that, we have a studio scale uh, Mariquette of the Yellow Submarine. Odd Jobs hat. And we have some more 007 merchandise. We have the Day of the Dead Cane from Spectre. The Moonraker laser. And the ejector button from Goldfinger. And then the white variant of the Moonraker laser. The Solex Agitator chip. 
Uh, above that, we get a mixture of the scaled replicas, everything from Star Trek to Batman to Masters of the Universe, Back to the Future, Masters of the Universe here. Jaws, I guess the inside version of the robotic shark. More Thundercats, we got some Batman 66 there. Uh, we got some Bond in the back there from You Only Live Twice. And then you have, um, I believe that's another Bond there. Or no, I'm sorry, that might be uh, Back to the Future, the plutonium for the, um, for the DeLorean. And above that, we have American Werewolf in London, including that uh, slaughtered lamb of bar sign there. We have a Lord of the Rings sword. And I believe it's a Men in Black weapon here. And then we have a Jurassic Park T-Rex skull. And a broom from the Nimbus from Harry Potter. And then that cane again from the Wolfman in its scaled form. And here's a close-up of that uh, medical tricorder. Overloading. And here's our look at the Cobra phaser. It's overloaded and we all died. Um, but if you wanted to, you can overload it and then turn it on again first to overload it. And then we decide, oh no, I don't want to overload it. I'm going to override the overload and we'll turn it off. Because there's a, we see it, uh, there's an episode where Worf finds one of these left in the turbo lift. Um, and it's set for overload and it's going to kill everybody and he takes it and we don't see what he does We just see him fiddling around inside and so we've taken the Elements from ensigns of command and that episode together and combined it into this replica uh, there's a very famous sort of uh, um, Mistake in that episode Worf walks out of the turbo lift holding the phaser like this with the door open and you can uh, totally see that his hat that the door is open in his hand when he does it and it just made it through post-production and it stayed in the show so it always made me laugh because we never actually see what he did so now we've been allowed to create it so everybody knows um, I actually worked on this at master replicas back in the day and I was never never fully happy with it it was at the end of master replicas life and the company was winding down and there was no budget and there were two things that bugged me one was the uh, p1 phaser and this one will be electronic and it will have lights and sounds, but this prototype isn't currently working. We've now got a proper, fully functioning P1 that will work independently of the phaser, has magnetic contacts that will allow it to work when inserted and removed, and it will do fire, uh, kill and stun. And then the other piece that we've managed to fix, this will be metal, this, this is a 3D printed prototype, this is metal, but it will all be metal in production with an ABS grip cover. This prop was designed in conjunction with, um, with William Shatner and he wanted it to look like an automatic pistol. Um, and an automatic pistol, the Master Replicas one, everyone will remember, you push the button and it's swung open. But that's actually counterintuitive to a way a real gun works. A real gun, you manually open it and then you shut it like that. So now that's how it works. You manually open it and you shut it. So it's correct to a real gun. Now the prop didn't do anything, it just slid backwards and forwards. But Mr. Shatner says it's supposed to be an automatic. Well, now it works like an automatic. Next up in this case, we get an assortment of fan favorites, including bottle openers from Batman, from Star Trek. Uh, they have band-aids, they have keychains. Some of these are the show exclusives that we've been revealing over the past few weeks leading up to the show. Nice to see them in person. We got a Chromar statue of the Ruby Slippers and then of Toto as well. Some other Chromar statues from They Live. Of course, Eagly, the, uh, the plush version here. That great copper bones. Now this is the uh, prop replica, not the bottle opener that we've shown you previously. Some of the miniatures here from the DC line all across on this shelf. Some uh, insignia sets you could get. These ones are from Star Trek. Here's some more scaled replicas from Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Masters of the Universe. Uh, we've shown these off before. There's that awesome dinner plate from Jurassic Park. You can see a review of that in our channel as well. We got the plush Jaws shark. 
from the world of Green Hornet, we have the Kato Dart Gun. And then the Beach Towel line. Uh, I believe we showed you guys these as well. These were all the uh, different Universal Monster movie towels, so you can check those out too. And it's an assortment of bottle openers. We showed several of these to you in reviews, including that Jaws bottle opener. We have a mixture of properties from Halloween to Lord of the Rings to It. That really cool portal gun bottle opener, we showed you that, guys, in a review as well. Uh, the Jurassic Park Raptor bottle opener, which looks essentially like a prop replica. You can use it for cosplay. Uh, some of the wine stoppers are sold out, as you can see here, with the house sigils. Uh, Star Trek bottle opener, Star Trek bottle toppers. We got the Hand of the King bottle opener, the hoverboard bottle opener from Beetlejuice. I believe this is a newer one, the Sandworm. And the Iron Giant. Below that, we get an assortment of their mugs. So these are all Hot Wheels inspired. You notice they got those really cool handles for the fuel pump. Uh, wrench is a bottle opener, a chrome cup. We got some uh, Grace Gold Crest porcelain cups, as with Star Trek too. And then some of their prop replica rings from Universal Monsters, from The Flash, from the world of Bond, several different Bonds here, and a little pin as well. They also have a series of tin totes, those classic lunch boxes from a lot of franchises here, including Masters of the Universe, The Monsters, Hellboy, Kit, and Thundercats for the classic Saturday morning cartoon there. And then license plate frames from Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, and Jaws. And then another prop replica here. This one's the Hornet's thing. And right next to it is the Green Hornet tote. And last up, we have a look at their keychain sets. These are all, sh a lot of these were revealed to recently. These are older ones, though. And this is going to be Jaws, Halloween, Goonies, with that fun VHS packaging there, E.T., and Batman 89. And then we got some more scaled replicas from Star Trek. And then we got the Batman, <laughs> Batman 89. <laughs> Man with the Golden Gun. Now they have a full-scale replica of this that breaks apart. This version does not break apart. The Creature from the Black Lagoon hand, which they also have in a full-scale. We got Men in Black. More Masters of the Universe. This Teela staff is newer. The Nimbus. The Panthro Nunchucks, which we showed you guys in a review you could check out if you want. Same with the Hammond Cane. And the Mr. Fusion. The Sting Sword from Lord of the Rings. And then an assortment of these fun signs from Jurassic World. And then their Band-Aid line. Now they have an assortment of fan-favorite Band-Aid lines for a variety of properties. And we have this awesome Dr. No Casino set here. And then the life-size replicas from the most recent Bond outing. As well as statues from a variety of properties including a show special Batman 66 cave. Now all of these are available on factoryentertainment.com. So in the tradition of their humble roots of master replicas, Factory Entertainment is doing production quality pieces now. These are going to be a very limited run. Uh, we're talking like three or four, uh, costing between twelve and $17,000 each. So very, very limited run. But these essentially are museum pieces or production pieces that you could use in a production. Uh, of course, uh, some of these are going to be based on digital assets uh, because they were only created in a uh, digital spectrum. No physical prop asset exists. But in the ones that are based on props, uh, they essentially worked with some ILM engineers and have produced these uh, pretty much capturing the entire amount of detail from the original um, screen used. Uh, props, including the electronics and the lighting uh, we see here for the ET mothership. And then the other side of the Enterprise here. So the first time someone's done an Excelsior, we see that great lighting on it, a huge amount of detail. Uh, the little phases of uh, blinking here, and of course, this is a signature series one with George Takai's signature. But just amazing, amazing, amazing amount of detail on this thing. And the fan favorite classic Enterprise here. 
just outstanding detail. I'm going to take you around a black. This is a signature series by William Shatner. And if you look in the back here, you can see the shuttle bay. And if you, it's hard to see with the lighting, but there is a tiny little shuttle in there and a tremendous amount of detail in the entire bay here. You can see all the way back there, just absolutely outstanding amount of detail. And then you can even see little people here in the lounge on the back of the Enterprise here as well. Spare no expense on this thing, and it should be when it costs, uh, I believe, around 15000 But you can see just that absolute great amount of detail on this thing. The lighting, um, like I said, these are going to be small runs, but if there is demand, they will make more of them. And this is not a final production piece, but showing off at the show here just to gauge fan interest. It's a prototype of a first contact Type 3 phaser rifle. There's no electronics. There's no other special features to it. Like I said, this is just to see if there's interest. And if enough fans uh, say there is, they might do a production run of this. But this is a great uh, way for them to sort of test the waters. And hopefully they'll do other pieces like this as well. And that was the Black Manta. This is the production run version of what we saw last year in the booth here. And we have our flux capacitor running over here. Now this is going to be a bigger run of about a thousand. Uh, there's no final price point on it yet, but it's probably going to be around $1,200. You can see the mounting blocks on it here as well. Uh, here's some of the sound effects. And they were able to contact the original manufacturers to get the actual capacitors that were used in the film as well. You can make them out right here. So these are the actual manufacturer parts that are making up the, manu the, uh, the flux capacitor. So this is pretty much the most accurate and uh, best flux capacitor you, you could possibly get. And that was the time displacement effect as well. And that wraps us here at the Factory Entertainment booth. We've shown you guys some great prop larficas. We've shown you some of the fan favorites line and that amazing new sort of uh, masterworks line that they are doing right now, uh, featuring very, very limited runs, uh, less, less than you can count on one hand, and uh, some just outstanding quality on those. So who knows where that line could take them, but the point of it is to get like highly desired uh, fan pieces out to uh, that normally wouldn't make a large production run. So they're going to be open and receptive to what fans want. So hopefully we'll see some other pieces in the future. Uh, so that's all for this time. Like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you guys at the next booth.